Back to the wash up now from the New South Wales state election. The Liberal Party is still licking its wounds, doing a bit of soul searching this morning after a major defeat at the state election. Joining us now is the former Liberal MP and member for Wentworth, Dave Sharma. Dave, uh, good morning to you. So what's your assessment of that Liberal wipeout in the weekend at a state level? Well, look, undoubtedly it's a serious loss, uh, Peter, and it's obviously the, the loss of the last state on the mainland that the Liberals are in government. So it... Uh, you know, it has, it has state but also federal consequences as a result. Um, look, it was always going to be difficult, a government that's been in power for 12 years, to, to get re-elected. But um, I would say that I think the New South Wales government can, uh, can look back proudly on how they've transformed the state in their 12 years in government uh, and the fact that they're leaving the state in a much better and much stronger position than they inherited it. Uh, clearly, that wasn't enough for the voters. Um, and it's going to take some time, to be honest, to understand uh, and reflect on, well, what are the lessons we've been given here and what do we need to take away from this? Yeah, I, I agree there. Fatigue, and we were playing this up uh, well before the election too, that fatigue after 12 years is certainly a big factor. But has the party and its factions learnt the lessons from that federal knockout in New South Wales last year? No, I don't think so. Um, I, don't, I don't think so necessarily at, at all. I mean, I think some of the machinery uh, in terms of the, the timing of the selection of candidates and how soon they could be in the field and a whole lot of internal disputes about the selection of candidates and people being installed into seats at short notice, look, clearly that's suboptimal and, and hurts us. Uh, and that was an issue during the federal election as well. So I think uh, that needs to be looked at quite seriously. I know the the Jane Hume Brian Lockman review into the federal performance certainly flagged that as an issue, the performance of the, the party machinery and, and particularly the pre-selection of candidates. And I think, um, look, a number of my colleagues in New South Wales are saying that the, the same issues were at play here, perhaps to a lesser extent, but that was certainly a factor. Yeah. Well, punters aren't mugs, you know. Voters aren't mugs. And we saw this with Keneally as well, you know. If, if there's, a, if there's um, a, a challenger that goes in, to an electorate doesn't really know the area, why would you vote for him? Look, that's, um, that's uh, absolutely true. I, I would say, though, and I think this is a difference, that um, in New South Wales, as we saw in Victoria, in fact, as well, this so-called teal wave did not materialise. Uh, you know, certainly they gave us a run for our money in a number of seats, but it looks like we'll hold on to a large number of those, if not yeah. most of them, uh, as well. And this is very much... I mean, it wasn't... A vote for a third force we saw we saw a vote uh, the swing was overwhelmingly to labor and you know i think that's it, as someone who believes in the two-party system to me that's a positive thing because it means that the system is enduring okay uh, there is still that issue of of the pro-climate inner city seats and the working class seats to the west which went red can both be placated at once dave Look, I think they can be. Um, I think they have to be if we want to be a successful uh, political force. And, you know, the, the messages aren't necessarily contradictory. I mean, people in, in the West care about uh, climate change and people in the inner cities also care about the cost of living. I mean, it, it doesn't mean that we, we can only focus on one of these issues at the expense of another. We need to have a message and a policy mm. platform and a package that address the concerns of, you know, the majority of Australians. And that's well, what mainstream centrist political parties well, do. Yeah, and, 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 and it seems simple to me. I mean, uh, you know, I, I'm just a, an ordinary voter, but, you know, you've got to get behind renewables, but you've also got to get behind coal and gas, you know, the, the, the staples, don't you? Well, look, I think um, the, the truth is that most of our power mix still comes from coal. There is a transition underway. Gas, as, as the world has recognised and experts have recognised, is a critical transition fuel to a more renewable economy. Uh, and it, the transition needs to be managed in such a way that we don't have outages and we don't have yeah. price spikes. And look, that was the New South Wales government approach. I mean, they were doing things which they didn't want to do, but things like prolonging the life of coal-fired power stations because they knew that if they were retired too soon, they would leave a huge supply gap in the market and that would cause prices to spike. And uh, they were certainly supporting the new gas facilities, new gas-fired power stations and new gas extraction facilities, which, which we need right. to, su to support this transition. OK, uh, let's just wrap up here on, uh, in politics in Israel, Dave. We've got these live pictures that are coming to us from Jerusalem now uh, as we speak. Let's take it. Yeah, this is what's going on in Jerusalem at the moment. So basically Netanyahu, he wants to rebalance the powers in Israel. The defence minister was critical of that, uh, so he was punted overnight. So basically this is, I feel like this is diminishing the court somewhat, Dave. But uh, what's your thoughts on his, on his move to do that? 
Look, I, I worry a little a bit about what I'm seeing in Israel. I mean, I think it's it's been a political crisis now for some weeks, and it's it's slowly becoming a constitutional crisis, yeah. uh, which which worries me. I mean, the Defence Minister Yoav Gallant, I knew him personally when I was in Israel before he even got into politics. Um, he's a very former senior commander in the Israeli Defence Forces, and all he cares about uh, is the security of Israel. And uh, the, the crime he committed, if you like, or the, the offence for which he's been dismissed, was to warn Netanyahu publicly that pushing ahead with these judicial reform bills was going to hurt the security of Israel. It's going to hurt military preparedness and military readiness. We're already seeing large numbers of reservists, which are a critical fighting element within the IDF, saying they're not going to turn up to reserve service. We've seen regional countries say that the Abraham Accords are coming under stress. Um, you know, I think the longer this debate goes on for, the worse it is for Israel as a nation. And I think... Um, Unfortunately, I mean, this, this debate is not just about judicial reform. It's actually become a debate about the character of the state of Israel and its future character, and this is really what's at stake now. Mm. All right. Dave Sharma, good to see you as always. Talk to you again soon. Thank Thanks for your time, Peter.